was just kind of, <coughs> excuse me, hello asthma much. I didn't film it or anything. It was just kind of one of those little projects where I was at Hobby Lobby and I saw this little um, metal purse frame and I thought, let me just pick that up. And I wonder if I can like slow stitch a little coin purse out of it, which I did. And um, I shared it on social media and immediately everybody's like, oh my God, how did you make that? So I went and picked up another one. <laughs> it's a different color, but that's okay. Um, there are things about how I made this that I like and things that I don't, um, but it worked well. It'd be a cute little coin purse or a little small sewing notions purse. I'm gonna show you the basics of how I made this. I'm gonna change it up and improve, I, hopefully I think improve how I did this exactly. Now, this is made up of hexagons, English paper piecing style, the outside fabric. So you first need to get a bunch of paper hexagons. Um, here they are. Here's my jar of Mexico, a bunch of these. You cover them in fabric. Okay, this is how you make your fabric hexagons. So you need some cardstock cut into hexagon shape. You can buy these pre-cut if you have a silhouette or cameo type cutting system. You can cut them using your cutting system. You could hand cut them, but you want them all to be the same. And before anybody asks me, because I know one of you is going to ask, um, you can also get, um, there's a number of thinlet type dies that um, are, they have a series of hexagon um, shapes, at which I have one. And I just tend to use the smallest one. These are... about an inch and a half. So you need a bunch of these and then some fabric. So this is just a piece of cotton that was from my scrap jar. So I'm gonna grab my fabric scissors and not drop them. Okay. So you wanna just roughly cut around your hexagon, try to leave about, I don't know, a quarter of an inch of fabric. Doesn't have to be perfectly straight. Can be crazy and wonky. Use fabric based, a fabric basting glue stick, or in this case, I use Elmer's washable school glue. It works just fine. And you wanna run glue around the edges and then pull up the fabric and stick it down. All the way around. Trying to do this around the phone tripod, which is challenging. until you have it all basted down around all sides. And you'll end up with something like that. It's a great way to use up some of your scraps. And just make a whole, you're gonna need a whole bunch of these for this project. Now when I say whole bunch, I mean a whole bunch. Okay, so then you just wanna get a needle and thread. Use a single, single strand of thread which this is, um, tie a knot in one end. There we go. Take two of your hexagons and put them right sides together. We're gonna stitch along just one of these flat sides. So I'm gonna take my needle 
grab a couple of threads of fabric from one, oops, a couple of threads of fabric from the other. Do that all the way across. Now this is buttonhole twist. It's a little bit of a thick thread, so I don't mind if the stitches show from the right side. I find it kind of find it gives it some handmade sort of charm. If you really, really don't want the stitches to show, use regular sewing thread. And go all the way across. Now, normally when I do these for like a slow stitching project, I just like stop there or maybe do them in a row um, to make sort of an edge binding. But if you're going to make a piece of fabric, then you're going to want to add more of them like here. You're going to want to do a row and then you're going to want to add more to the side. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So again, you take your new one right sides together with one of the old ones. I'm going to bring my thread through the orange one, grab a couple of threads, and then grab a couple of threads of the gray one. Go all the way across to the other corner. Great thing to do like in front of the TV at night or turn on some music. Turn off the turn off the news and just stitch. Okay, normally probably when you get to the other corner you would tie it off, um, which I did at first, but then I got tired of doing that. So what I did was I wove the thread back through the stitches I just made. Back to that, that other point right there. And then I took this, I wanna sew it here. So I took this like this, kind of bent this a little bit. Flip it over, I'm right-handed so I need to flip it over. And then I caught the blue corner and the orange corner, like that. And then do the same thing across to here and tie a knot. Oops, it's gonna be a bumpy video. So then I'll tie a knot. And now you have the beginnings of a piece of fabric. Like I said, the stitches show on the right side, which I didn't mind so much. But if you don't really want them to show, then you, number one, want to use a fabric or a thread that matches maybe a little better, but also use something thinner than buttonhole twist. Once you have one of the hectagons ideally completely surrounded by other hexagons, then you can pull the cardboard backing out, which you definitely want to do. And you just pull up the edges. And 
pull the fabric out and then you know you can give it a a repress before you stitch it down like that okay as part of this video i'm going to give you a copy of the pattern oops that i made this is i'll give it um, to use a free download and it the link will be down in the video description once you have enough um <laughs> hexagons sewn together to cut two of these you need two of these i am actually this took me a while to prep because I'm working on a couple different projects and I was trying to get enough fabric sewn together to do both projects. I don't know that I accomplished that, but I got tired of waiting. But I have this, right, that's a lot. You don't need this much, but you need, to, you need enough for two. So the next thing you want to do is cut your shapes out. But if you just cut your shapes out, all those little stitches you just did are going to unravel, in my opinion. Right or wrong, that's what I think. So what I did with this one was I did some fusible interfacing on the back side of the fabric. Now in this one, I did a fusible, puffy, felt-like interfacing, and I think it made it really thick and maybe, maybe even too thick. So for this next one, I just have your standard woven, um, like shirt, cotton weight interfacing. Use what you have if you have some in your stash, but and you've used fusible interfacing before, then you know what I mean. This is not the stretchy stuff. This is just the regular woven, and that'll work fine. This is actually scraps. So I'm going to piece a couple pieces of these scraps onto this sheet of hexagon fabric um, and cover the whole, I'm gonna iron it on the back and cover the whole back and fuse it down really well. So I'm gonna do that and I'll be back. Okay, once you have it ironed on like this, you're going to want to cut out two of these out of this fabric and two of these out of some other scrap fabric for the lining. So you have fabric on the inside and the outside of the bag. Okay, so I'm going to take my paper pattern piece and I'm, because I do kind of want to try to save some of this for the other project, I'm going to try to align this up so that I can save as much as possible. But I'm going to just lay the paper pattern piece on the fabric and then I'm going to just trace around it with a pen. This is just a big pen. Don't, you don't, you can use a pencil. These lines are never going to show, so it doesn't matter. Okay, I'm going to cut these out. Okay, so the interfacing is going to give you time to get this sewn together before the stitches unravel. And um, you could do this by hand or you could just do it on a machine. I'm going to do it on a machine. Um, what I'm going to do first is finish off the top edge so that when we attach it to the frame, there's no raw edge pieces of fabric up there, even though it's going to be between um, the pieces of metal because there's a, let me show you what I mean. There's like a channel that the fabric goes in. There's a channel there. So even though the fabric's going to go in that channel, I still want the edges to be neat and clean. So the first thing I'm going to do I'm going to take one of the lining pieces and one of the outside pieces. I'm going to put them right sides together and I'm going to stitch along this edge here from corner to corner and then clip, clip the edge um, and then turn it right side out and give it a press. I'll show you what I'm doing. Let me go do that and I'll be right back. Okay, so there's a row of stitches here. Now you need to clip in towards the row of stitches around the curve to get it to lie flat when you press it. So I'm going to take my scissors and, well, scissors that are sharper than that. Look at these. Yeah. And I'm going to press almost to the stitches, not quite. All the way, whoops, 
all the way around until you do that. And that way when you turn it right side out, it'll lay flat. I'm gonna do that and press it and I'll be right back. Okay, now before you do anything else, take each side of your bag and make sure it fits neatly into that channel of the purse frame. And that there aren't any, it's not a weird shape that doesn't fit, which this one does. Let's check the other one. Yep, that one fits too. All right, so now, it's a semi-tricky part. Okay, we're gonna put right sides of the lining together. I'm gonna stick a couple of pins. I could use sewing clips, but I don't wanna go get them. They're, at the, <laughs> they're on the other table. So I'm gonna put a couple pins there. And then I'm gonna take the outside of the bag, right sides together. Just put a couple of pins just to hold everything together. Now, what you wanna do is a little tricky. So you want to start about here. So you wanna leave an opening on the lining, about an inch and a half, two inch opening. So you wanna start here and you wanna sew all the way around. You're gonna to get to here where the little corners are. And you wanna sew up to that corner and then across to the other corner, go all the way around. Then do this one and this one. You might wanna stop and back tack here and then start a new row and back tack here and then keep sewing. Rather than doing a continuous line of stitches, that might be easier for you. And if it is, do that. But we're going to sew all the way around and get these two pieces together. Clipping our curves like we just did for the other part then turn it right side out and give it a press. Let me go do that and I'll be back. Okay, just like before, we wanna make sure we clip all these curves. Otherwise, when we go to turn it out the other way, it's not gonna lie flat. So we're gonna to clip towards the seam, not, not, at, to, not cutting the stitches, just clip close to the stitches. I used about a quarter of an inch seam allowance on the bag. I'll try to remember to put that on the notes on the pattern. If I forget, somebody remind me. So where we have our opening, whoops, is flat. I'm not going to clip that. I'm going to skip over to the other corner. The sides are a little bit rounded, so I'm going to clip them too. Okay. Now we get to turn it right side out, which to be honest is a little challenging because there's a lot of bulk here. So just take your time, you'll get it. Push all the seams out. So right here at the corners, so we did some sewing, but you might still find that a little bit of the fabric is sticking out like right here. I just push it down and do a couple of hand tacking stitches there, which I will probably do when we attach the purse frame. The first thing I'm going to do is give it a press, and then I'm going to pull the lining out, and I'm going to sew up that hole. So I'm going to just do this and I'm going to push the raw edges in like that and I'm going to run a machine stitch across there to sew up that hole so I'll be right back and I'll give it a press while I'm gone I'll be right back okay to finish the assembly on your bag we need to attach the frame and we also need to sew up any loose bits of fabric that are right here where the front and back join because it's just really hard to get in there perfectly with your sewing machine so First, I'm going to fix the hole. I'm going to use the same thread that I used to sew all the octagons together because that will just be easy. I'm going to put the needle between the two pieces of fabric and have it come up above where the loose part is. 
that'll hide the knot on the inside. And then I'm going to just do sort of a whip stitch. I might do a blind hem. We'll see. We'll see how fussy it gets right here. Let's see. If it gets to be too fussy, just do a little bit of a whip stitch. The reality is most of this is not going to show because the frame is going to kind of be in the way. So I'm just going to whip stitch it together. Make sure if there's any loose pieces of thread that you get rid of those before you attach your frame. Like I said, make sure all these little holes or imperfections are taken care of. Sewn shut. If you need to, you have to rip some stitches out and do it again. Okay, I'm going to try to do a kind of a low profile knot here. One, two, one second. And then I'm going to run my thread near the knot, but back underneath the fabric. Oops. So that hides that tail end of the thread between the layers of fabric. And then just cut it off. And that's all sewn together. And that'll look just fine once the bag is done. Again, you won't even see it. We did some hand stitching on this one too, which again, you can't even see. So I'm going to go to the other side now. Okay, now we have a bag body. We just need a closure for the top. So there's no easy way to do this. <laughs> Let me just tell you that. I'm going to just grab some thread here. I don't know if this is enough, but I'm... I've got a bunch of needles with random thread on it. This is embroidery floss. I would recommend using something fun because it's going to show. So use a fun color or um, a fun texture. And you want to slide your frame over one part of the bag. Try to center it. It's really difficult because it, you can't really like clip it. You can't like really do anything except just hold it. I don't know. Maybe there's an easier way, but that's what I found. So once I have it kind of where I want it, then I'm going to start. You can't see what I'm doing. Hold on. Okay. Once I have the frame kind of centered on this half of the bag, then I'm going to start by knotting my thread, which I've done already. I'll do another knot. I'm going to have the knot be like right here so that when I pull this tight, it's hidden up inside the channel of the frame. At the same time, I'm gonna to try to hit this hole. There's a hole down there on the frame. I don't know if I'm going to, but let's see. Yep, 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 yep. Oops, seem like that. There we go. So once I have that started, I'm going to do pull the thread in here and then I'm going to try to go over to the next hole in the frame, which you may or may not be able to see. And they're very hard to get the needle in. So this is probably the hardest part of the whole entire bag. And this is the part where I sometimes needed pliers. There we go. So just do that until you get around the whole edge of the frame and you get this side on and then do the same thing to the other side. I'm going to do that and I'll be right back. You may find that you're like me and you have trouble getting the needle through. 
Grab, grab some needle nose pliers. Get it to where you can see that the needle end is poking through the hole. And then grab a pair of pliers. Force it. Um, it's just that I don't have enough strength in my hands all the time to get into this tight spot. Oops. So anyway, pliers. Pliers work. Okay, so once you're done, you have yourself a cute little coin purse. Now, if you want to make sure your knots don't come undone, then each, each place where you put a knot, get some uh, Dritz Fray Check and put a little drop of that on each one of the knots and then they won't go anywhere. And then, whoop, whoop, whoop. And then you have yourself a cute little coin purse. Now, you can do these slow stitched um, or you can do sort of half and half, which is what I did. Um, half slow stitch, half regular stitching. Regular stitching? Machine stitch? I don't know. I will say this one um, is a leader. Because I didn't put as much interfacing and batting in between the layers, it's a little easier to get into than this one, which is very, this one's very stiff. This one's a little bit more, see it's more flexible. This one you can still get into, but it's not, so you have to kind of really pull. So I would use the thinner weight fusible interfacing and not the fusible batting interfacing. So anyway, there you go. I hope I hope that gave you some ideas of what you can do with just scraps you have laying around. And again, the little frame is from Hobby Lobby, and it's this one. And I just used regular thread and, and or embroidery floss, scraps of fabric that I had. And then I always have some of this. This stuff works great. I have this around all the time for stuff, sewing projects. It's great on your knots so they don't go anywhere. All right, that's it. Please check the video description for all appropriate links. And um, if you have, if you can support the free content here on YouTube and over in the Facebook art groups, uh, please do so. I have a link tree list of links down below, which includes uh, ways to support the free content, links to my Facebook groups, my Instagram, if you want to follow me over there, my email newsletter, all of that stuff. There's links down in the video description for my art foamies if you want to buy some of my art foamies and like, yeah, check it out. And if you have a favorite content creator, they probably have a bunch of links that you can do, which would include following them on social media and supporting their free content. So go check out their video description. And if you can't find any of that, ask them. Maybe just for some reason it's not on there. That's it for today. Please stay safe, stay healthy, stay creative. Please wear a mask and go out and do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. I'll see you later. Bye, guys.